Hello and welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. My name is Tasso Comanescu, and in this tutorial, I'll be going over for you Scarborough Fair, the traditional English folk song, as arranged by David Brandon. Uh, typically, you can find this arrangement in the Christopher Parkening Volume 2 Method Book. And I've made a few tweaks, which I'll point out as we go through it. Uh, specifically, one of the things that's cool about this arrangement is the ending of the piece echoes the melody with harmonics, reminiscent of like raindrops falling. So that's kind of neat. And there's a repeat of the main theme. Uh, and so we'll go over some of the things that you can do differently uh, on the repeat. And I would suggest also listening to the Mark Wesseling recording off his debut album, Classical Guitar. He does a really great job if you want a reference recording. And for further study, you could check out the seminal recording in the pop world, which is the Simon and Garfunkel rendition of Scarborough Fair. So lots of cool things to unpack here. This is a great piece if you're out there playing gigs or uh, you know, just even a concert. It could be a nice encore even uh, if you like. So one of my all-time favorite pieces when I was coming up, and it's a pleasure to be able to teach it to you all today. So let's dive in. So the key of the piece is E minor. There's only one sharp, which is F sharp, and it's rolling arpeggios the whole time, meaning there are no rests. So on every eighth note in each bar, we have a note that's being played until we get to the final system in measure 26, where it morphs into quarter notes and we have the harmonic part. But we'll get there at the end. That function's kind of like a coda. Um, and we're in E minor the whole time, and I'll talk about this a little later in the tutorial, but in measure 11, you get the Dorian sound, which is that raised sixth, the C sharp, which is really neat, so we'll talk about that. I have that circled and highlighted in my score when I practice the piece because it's such a cool moment. But anyway, let's go over the first phrase of the piece, which is, measures one through four. This is kind of like the introduction, okay? So it's all open strings in the beginning. You have open E on the high E string and the low E string. Now you could do two things here to start. You could play a rest stroke with your middle finger, which sets you up for the arpeggios coming up. Or you could use your A finger. Either way, I like to do a little bit of a fermata on that first note. Before I take off, okay? Versus doing this. Again, it's up to you, depending on how fast you want to play the piece. I typically like to play it a little slower and more melancholically, okay? So open E, open B, open G, open B again, and now E. I like to use my second finger for this, the second fret of the D string little vibrato, have that ring through the open G. And now at the start of measure two, move it up two frets to F sharp, do a rest stroke there with your thumb, get a little vibrato, open G, open B, open G. So that's that E minor nine sound, which is so cool. Uh, and then you have the D here, third finger, fifth fret of the A string, open G. Now you could always play it as an open D as well. Now I do that sometimes when I play Ponticello. So that's a tweak from the original arrangement. And then measures three and four repeat, measures one and two. So all together slowly. Again, the Ponticello version. As I mentioned, I like to lean. And maybe the second time straight. And now we're into the main theme. Which is the Are You Going to Scarborough Fair? Very famous melody. And this is measures five through eight. So on beats one and three, typically you have the melody. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three. So right there it's a little different, and then one. 
So this is a great arrangement to practice your separation of melody to accompaniment. So one of the easiest ways you can do this is simply play the accompaniment lighter, not the melody louder. So that's one way. The other way is just to play the melody with a rest stroke like this. All right. Uh, maybe mix and match, uh, maybe use your M finger. When I'm sitting in this position, the more folk position, I tend to favor my M finger. You can always do it with your A finger. So. Mix and match. Uh, in measure seven, I like to re-articulate with the same finger. The slicing motion. So that's an overview of some of the tricks. Now let's learn the notes. Measures five through eight. So all open strings in measure five, which is great. So that's open E, B, G, B, E, B, with a low E in the bass. And now measure six, second system, we have the B, fourth finger, seventh fret, and then open B and open G with a low E in the bass. So you can see there I'm doing, and it would be economy picking if you were talking in electric guitar terms, but I'm rest stroking M and then playing a free stroke underneath. So measure five, measure six. And you can phrase a little bit, a little more weight on beat one, less on three, and then more vibrato. And now we have, major seven chord here, which is a D chord in uh, bar seven. So it's your D shape, open D, F sharp with your second finger, second fret of the high E string, A, first finger, second fret of the G string, D, third finger, third fret of the B string. Pinky's free to get the sus four here on the G, on the third fret of the high E string, back to F sharp and then A. You could alternate here, or A, and be really like technical about it. I'm only gonna use one finger uh, at a time, and I'm gonna alternate everything. I'm gonna be as technically uh, savage as possible. But, you know, that sometimes doesn't sound as good. So like I have experimented with this versus just keeping it consistent with that finger. And I know uh, Tavi Gennario, again, nod to him today. He's really good about doing that. He can play really virtuosically with all his fingers and then he can milk certain moments just with the same finger. I've definitely learned that by watching him on some of the other videos here at EliteGuitarist.com. And I would encourage you to explore that. Sometimes we learn these rules, we learn these techniques, but we have to use our ears too. It's very, very important. So that takes us now from that D chord back to E minor in measure eight. So it's all open strings in measure eight, open E's to start, open B, open G, open B, and then E at the second fret of the D string with our second finger, open G. Notice how I'm using thumb anytime I get to the bass strings. So nice and slow, measures five through eight. Now we get the Rosemary and Time part. This measures 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I like to use thumb on the low E here to start. Open G. B with your first finger, seventh fret of the high E string. And then you could use four here if you wanted. I like to use three on the D, which is the 10th fret of the high E string. You could also use your first finger to set you up for the E here at the start of measure 10. But I like to use my third finger sometimes because then I can have two fingers behind helping with the vibrato here at the start of measure 10. So one and two and three and, and I'll save the rest stroke for measure 10. 
and add vibrato. So it really pops there. This is the high E at the 12th fret of, of the high E string. Low E in the bass again, open G, low E in the bass again, open B, open G, open B, and then back to the D. And I like to use my first finger here so I can slide down into measure 11. If you don't like that slide sound, or, or first finger, it's kind of nice. Notice I'm barely playing that open G and open B there, so that the melody really pops. You can practice that just by playing the melody by itself. So coming out of measure 10, You're going to have an A in the bass now. We get this Dorian sound that I just love in measure 11. B with the open A, so 7th fret of the high E string. Open G. C sharp, which is the 9th fret of the high E string. 3rd finger. Really do some vibrato there. It's kind of important. And lean on it. To the A. Which is the fifth fret of the high E string, and that open G is on the end of each beat. Measure 12, B with your third finger, seventh fret of the high E string, and then open Bs and Gs to finish. Okay, so I'll come out of measure eight. Measure nine now. Okay, and now we have this really cool harmonic to start our next phrase, which is a little longer. This is measures 13 through 18. Okay, so we'll start on the harmonic. 